Having a main character who doesn't speak and has no eyes can be quite challenging because all the main facial features are basically missing. In order to bring some subtle emotions to the stale face, I had the idea to develop a mechanical skull which goes inside the silicone head and enables the control of the eyebrows and lips with some control screws which are hidden under his hairpiece. This undertaking uh, was actually quite experimental because I figured out everything by myself and didn't have any references to work with. Um, I actually started this over one year ago and by now I know a ton of things I would improve on a second try. But anyway, um, just recently I received the final two hats from puppet maker Ulrich which will be used in the final animation and I'm quite excited to find out how it will work. I started with a very rough gypsum cast of the head, which I cut in half to get an idea of the volume inside I could work with. Then I used my design software to create precise technical drawings of all the parts needed. The first part I started manufacturing is the back plate, the central piece of the skull. The five control screws for the eyebrows and lips will go directly through the backplate, so this requires some really deep holes. And in the final step, I cut all the threads necessary in the piece. Then I went to construct the mouthpiece. This tiny piece will slide up and down behind the lips to tilt the corners of the mouth. The stainless steel connection rods are silver soldered to withstand the stiffness of the silicone flesh. And for the center connection I'm using a screw and some normal electric solder. I really hope this connection will be strong enough and I'm still not sure. <laughs> and here's the first test fit with the backplate and this cap I machined off screen. It protects the mechanism and provides the center hinges for the lips. Now for the lip pieces. I decided to grind them into a more organic form in order to provide a better grip to the silicone and so they will use up less space. Voila! The top plate of the skull will house all the control screws and provide a snap fit for the hairpiece. Thank you. 
I was using 3mm steel balls as locators for the hairpiece, but I must admit this didn't work out as well as expected and they fell out later. And this was intended to be the mouth control screw, but it actually jammed up in the first test animation and I had to replace it with a more rigid design later too. Now for the eyepiece, which will hold the eyebrows. My design has a central block for all the four slides, two per eyebrow, with small slits to pass through the connection rods. A challenging part to machine. Well, after breaking that first tiny end mill, I tried a different, even riskier approach. Um, I really wouldn't recommend this, but it actually worked. But I kept my finger on the emergency button all the time, just in case it all jams up. Finally, these rather complex housings for the eyebrow mechanism were finished. Next up were the sliders, very similar to the mouth sliders. really fiddly parts and the final touches always remain handcraft. Now let's see how all this comes together. The eyebrows were manufactured very similarly to the lips, so I skipped some steps here. Each eyebrow has an inner and an outer slider to control the height as well as the angle of each brow. The center sliders serve as hinge and keep the eyebrow in place, while the outer ones only move it up and down and are loosely connected. The thread lock I used here didn't lift past the first test animation either, another part I had to redo later. I really could use a lathe here, then I could machine screws with integrated steps exactly as I would need it here. At last I craft the back of the heads, which also include the neck connections to attach the heads to the puppet.
a really bulky part for my standards. I really like using these saw blades to quickly remove a lot of material. And this plate will be one of the hair pieces which snap on with a magnet. And here we have the final two skulls finished. The main difference lies in the mouth area. While one of them has the lips you saw me manufacture, the other one has a jaw and will be able to open his mouth slightly. And here we see the first facial expression in action. Then it was up to Ulrich, the puppet maker, to sculpt the heads around the skulls and build a complex mold to pour in the final silicone heads. This process also involved a couple of failures and retries and experiments. The first head I got back for testing had multiple issues. The forehead moves up and down with the eyebrows, preventing the hairpiece from fitting over the screws. Secondly, the mouth moves in a really uncanny way, because you can recognize the lip pieces beneath the skin. Also, the entire mechanism moved very stiffly in a very limited range, and I suspect a lot of silicone got into the mechanism. To better understand what's going on beneath the skin, I cut open the first head. The yellow stuff you can see here is some polymer clay Ulrich has used to better approach the final shape of the face. The brown tape was intended to stop the silicone from flowing into the mechanism, but instead it hindered the movement and didn't help very much. As suspected, silicone got into the mechanism and I had to disassemble and clean everything. After some more experimentation, we decided to add some foam pieces to the crumple zones of the face. This should allow it to flex more easily and also prevent the silicone from flowing into the mechanism. For the small remaining gaps we used clay to seal them. Eventually, after many months, I now have the final two heads. The movements are still not perfect, but I consider them good enough to add some very subtle expressions to the stale face of the human main character. In the same run, Ulrich has also finished the hands, hair and the cylinder for that character, so I can finally assemble everything. I'm really excited to see how these heads will behave in the upcoming months when we finally will start shooting the office scenes. Obviously not everything turned out perfectly on that project and there are tons of design choices I would do differently on a second try. But ultimately I love challenges like these where I really have to solve new problems by myself without relying on established solutions. Ulrich and I definitely have learned a lot in the process and I'm sure these experiences will help us in future projects as well. On that note, I really want to thank all of my supporters on Patreon and Paypal for enabling me to go on adventures like these. Developing such a complex idea over a long period of time would simply be impossible in a classic production. So thank you all so much, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're new to the project, make sure to check out my other videos and the links in the description to find out more details.